art, culture, aesthetic photo ops, and one of the best views of the city. At first glance, Berlin's Humboldt Forum seems to have it all. But it's also faced controversy over its display of looted African artifacts. What's the current situation? The current situation is that uh, the Benin bronzes don't belong to us anymore. We just transferred the ownership. This means it's the property of the state of Nigeria. I've been wary of visiting because of the controversy surrounding it, but the forum also claims to focus on colonial injustice stories, so I want to see for myself what's going on here. As provocative, and some people might say antagonistic, as this architecture might be, it is opening the discussion. This place constantly pops up on my social media as one of the things to do in Berlin. It recently opened to the public in 2021, and today I'm gonna to check it out to see if it lives up to its reputation. But first, what actually is the forum? Think museum meets art exhibition space meets cultural hub right in the city center. And the most popular attraction here, the rooftop terrace. Okay, the view from up here is admittedly one of the best in the city. You've got the Berlin Cathedral here, Museum Island, the TV Tower, of course, and you can just about see the Brandenburg Gate over there in the distance. The building's exterior is a complete reconstruction of the Berlin Palace, a major work of Prussian Baroque architecture. So why is the Forum so important for Berlin? Berlin grew in the 18th and 19th century around this structure, this palace. This is Tarek Ibrahim, visitor advocate at the Humboldt Forum. If you look on any map, the streets kind of radiate around here. Now, that disappeared or was destroyed um, after its demolition in the Second World War. The East Germans uh, built their own parliament here, the Palace of the Republic, but that never really quite restored the urban fabric. Consequently, you're looking at putting back the heart of the city. Being an old Prussian palace, mm -hmm. um, and now this focus on global art, especially colonial injustice stories, um, how does that fit together? I think a lot, it wasn't even apparent to many people, the problematics of exhibiting often works that were acquired or related to the legacy of imperialism and colonialism in an imperial reconstruction. I actually think that that contrast drives the dialogue um, because it seems in some way so strange to put these collections in a reconstruction of a palace in this architectural nostalgia for empire. It certainly opens a conversation. Yeah, and that's exactly what we want here. I mean, we're talking here about the Humboldt Forum, a place for discourse and dialogue. And I think that um, as provocative, uh, and some people might say antagonistic, as this architecture might be, it is opening the discussion uh, that for a long time has been neglected. So it was kind of originally planned as Germany's version of the Louvre, mm -hmm. right? Of the British Museum, they always say. Of the British yeah. Museum. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about that? I think comparisons to institutions that have such problematic histories mm. in regarding in regarding to their, their collections and um, the manner in which they were, these collections were acquired is dangerous. In Germany, visiting a museum is often, we, they use the word Pflicht, which means obligation. Okay. <laughs> in Great Britain and America, visiting a museum is Vergnügung, it's enjoyment. Mm -hmm. In that sense, I think you can make the comparison to the British Museum or cultural institutions in North America or, or, or Great Britain. After talking to Tarek, it's about time I head inside. The contrast between the old Prussian style and the modern structure is quite aesthetically pleasing, and I can see why it draws visitors. But conceptually, it seems strange to rebuild an imperial structure, especially given the kind of art that's on display here. Let's check out some of the exhibitions. 
Most of the permanent exhibitions here are completely free, which isn't the case in most museums in Berlin, so that's definitely a benefit. There's a mix of permanent and temporary exhibitions here, many of which are immersive and interactive. Like this one on living with death. The Forum's initial mission was to be in touch with as much of the world as possible, with a focus on colonial injustice and black and indigenous stories. Many of the exhibitions here display art and artifacts from all over the world, in particular from Africa and Asia. But it also tells local stories. Berlin Global maps the history of politics and revolution in the city, but also pop culture, like, for example, the prevalence of techno music in Berlin's history. This huge industrial door is actually an integral part of Berlin's history, and most recently, it was the door of Berlin's famous club, Tresor. Speaking of clubbing, you can even immerse yourself in the industrial sound of Berlin's famous techno scene. But Germany's legacy of colonialism is also an important topic, one that's prevalent throughout many of the Forum's exhibitions. This specific exhibition has sparked recent controversy over who has the right to own and display African art or objects. The Benin bronzes, of which this is one, are some of the most coveted African artefacts in the world. The Nigerian artefacts were looted from the sacked city of Benin by the British in 1897 and then later sold to German museums. Though the single largest collection of Benin bronzes is still held at the British Museum. Nigeria has asked for all the artifacts to be returned and Germany cooperated. We just transferred the ownership of all the objects to the state of Nigeria. This is Dr. Christian Koch, director of Berlin's Ethnological Museum. How did you come to that conclusion or that decision that this was how you The decision was a long discussion, so we discussed with our partners from Nigeria and we decided that the situation nowadays is different from what it was uh, decades ago. Mm -hmm. We are just in a situation at the moment that we say that this looting of the object was definitely injustice and we have to take action in this way and this was the decision that we returned the objects. The Benin bronzes are the most famous objects on display, but the Ethnological Museum is also returning some looted artifacts from other countries to their original homes. We see here that we don't have originals on display here. Mm -hmm. We have copies of, uh, I would say, the most important objects for our colleagues from Namibia. You see pictures, photographs and a lot of uh, text, a lot of different opinions, different perspectives. This is so crucial um, because all these objects are pre-colonial. It was established, at least for our colleagues in Namibia, that for them it's much more important to get objects back before the colonial period because this shows there was a history, a significant history before colonial time. So the use of copies, films, text, putting objects into context, is this the future? Very straight, yes because we would like to get these uh, collections into the, um, into the future, I would say. Mm -hmm. Not only contemporary perspectives, but also future perspectives. And keep the educational side uh, in there. Take it as educational um, items, but also just realizing how do we deal with our history, also with our shared history. Mm -hmm. And this we can only do in collaboration. The repatriation of African art is a major global topic right now. It's interesting to see how the Humboldt Forum has dealt with this controversy and taken note of the criticism and actually started to return many of these African objects. As my day here draws to an end, I head back up to the rooftop for a final view of the city. TV tower right there.
The rooftop bar is an ideal spot for a coffee or a cocktail. It's a really cool space to come up to and reflect on my time here and the exhibitions that I've seen. Well, a reconstructed palace right in the centre of Berlin is definitely a selling point. I can see why it's so popular. And for me, it's not really overrated because of all the different exhibitions and stories to be told here. What do you think of the exhibitions on display here and the place in general? Would you visit? Let us know in the comments.